Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's review of the Arai Torcross 5 helmet. We've been waiting a long time for this helmet. The Torcross 4 has been in Arai's range for 12 years and now it can finally head off into retirement. This, the Torcross 5, is a big deal for Arai. They're laid on a European launch in Spain where we had the chance to wear this TX5 on the road and also on the dirt. And now I've also worn it for a few hundred miles in grotty British weather since getting back from sunny Spain. And that means I'm in a good position now to run through the important information to explain what's new about this helmet and also how it feels to ride in it on the road and on the dirt. This new lid shows a lot of the progression that we've seen on other Arai's released in recent years and I think this is a good step on from the Tour Cross 4. If you like your TX4 and you want to replace it, I don't think there's anything in this update that's going to upset you and I think there's actually quite a lot that you'll be very pleased to see. There's approval to a higher safety standard, you've got innovations in ventilation, the way the peak and the visor are mounted and also improvements to the visor itself among other changes. So let's get into it. The shell is made from Arai's Superfiber composite of fibres. It has a peripheral belt which is an extra strip of fibre over the brow just above the visor. Arai say this allows the EPS impact liner in that area to be thinner which improves peripheral vision without reducing protection levels. Our eye shells are stiffer than other brands of helmet, which is one of the things they pride themselves on. That stiff shell allows them to run a softer EPS impact liner on the inside, and they believe that makes the ideal combination to protect us against head injuries. It does mean our eyes tend to be, in general, on the heavy side, but this one's actually relatively good on that score. This size medium TX5 weighs in at 1,705 grams on our scales, and that's only 20 grams more than the TX4 when we weighed that. It's not a lightweight, but it does carry itself well. In my time wearing it in both Spain and Britain, it's felt well balanced and it gives me no fatigue issues over a reasonable length of time in the saddle. The shape of the shell is rounder than the outgoing TX4 and it's less pointed around the chin. The visor pivot sits lower, which means more of the shell is smooth, and according to our eye, that means you're able to be protected by more of the shell. And this is a key area in helmet testing. Lowering that pivot and the peak mounting has been very important in the past for improving our eye safety performance. Ventilation through the shell comes at the chin, the forehead, and on the top. The chin vent functions in two ways. There are sliding switches both inside and out. If you open just the outside slider here, air is directed through the top of the chin bar towards the inside of the visor. If you open the inner slider as well, then air heads directly through to your mouth. In my experience, this vent works well in either of those configurations and it gives you a real feeling of air flowing in. The forehead vent is the same as is used on Arai's Quantic. It sits directly behind the brand logo and pushing the switch into the body of the vent opens up two inlet holes to allow air through. I noticed that bringing through some air when riding in the cold British temperatures and it was also helpful in warmer Spanish temperatures as well. Some people have criticised the Quantic vent for allowing air to come through even when it's shut. I didn't notice that while riding in this helmet but I wouldn't be surprised if some riders find that vent does let some air through when it's shut. The top vent, that slides open in two stages and it has a single inlet hole down into the lid and then there are three exhaust vents that are just under this rear spoiler and you switch them using that switch there. On top of that, there are two small outlets at the back which create a pressure difference between the front and back of the helmet to pull some warm air through from the inside. There are some vents that have been ditched from the TX4. There were some vents on the side of the TX4's chin bar around here. They're gone, even our I say they didn't do a great deal anyway, so they didn't seem particularly upset at losing those. And the other vents that have been cut are the brow vents that Arrow have become famous for. They just sit in the top of the visor. I think it's a shame to lose those as I find them the most effective vents on an Arrow in general. But Arrow needed to increase the size of the eye port to make room for larger goggles when the helmet's worn in off-road mode. So that's why there are no brow vents on this helmet. Overall, with this helmet, I found ventilation to be quite good without really excelling. Now, the peak, that's redesigned from the TX4. It's got a large scoop cut out of it to allow air to reach the top vents and two cuts here that allow air to go through and relieve the pressure, which helps prevent that peak from either lifting in the airflow or being pushed down. I wore this helmet at a wide range of speeds and felt the helmet was stable at all of those speeds. Now having a peak fitted to a helmet will always affect aerodynamics in some way, but I found this one to be pretty good. I find it does generate some noise when I'm riding a Suzuki V-Strom 800DE. That bike's got a tall touring screen fitted and the wind flow induces a vibration at the tip of the peak, which translates into a low pitched rumbling noise. It doesn't annoy me greatly, but it is very noticeable. And on long journeys, I'd be looking to remove the peak to ride in street mode and eliminate that noise. Now, thankfully on that note, owners of the old TX4 will be pleased to learn there's a serious reduction in the amount of faff 
required to remove and refit the peak. There's now just one screw and a 20 pence coin is perfect for removing and replacing that screw. Taking the screw out removes this cover over the top and then the peak just comes away. To put it in street mode, you just put the cover back on top, screw it on, and then you're in street mode. Our eyes owner's manual says you can also loosen this screw to adjust the angle of the peak. In reality, you can have those screws done up quite tightly and still pull the peak up and down. I find there's about a 30 millimeter difference from the highest point to the lowest. When riding into the sun in Spain, the peak gave me good protection against glare. Right, let's move on to the visor, which is one of the most obvious improvements over the TX4. The pointed shape of the TX4 meant that visor had a very steep curvature and that made it tricky to get the pin lock insert mounted properly and it also meant optical clarity wasn't perfect. The rounder shape of this helmet addresses both of those issues. It's now easier to get the pin lock right and the clarity of vision is also very good. Now there aren't really intermediate stages for the visor as it lowers. You can set it to whichever opening amount you want, but I found at speeds much above 30 miles per hour, this visor would just slip down in the wind flow and ended up open by about 10 millimeters like that maybe. That's as good as it effectively a cracked position to allow some airflow, but I couldn't keep the visor halfway open at any speed. The visor clicks shut on its final step, but there's no fiddly catch to worry about like you get on other arrows. You just give it a decent push and that'll lift. When the visor's fully open, this bottom edge does sit within my line of sight, but I didn't find it distracting or annoying, which I know was an issue for some TX4 owners. The pinlock insert is a new type. It's a 120 XLT. That's the highest grade of moisture protection, and the XLT part means it allows some extra light through. Pinlock wouldn't give us exact figures, but they sent us a graph that suggests this insert allows in about 2% more light than a regular insert. I'd estimate about 95% rather than 93% of the light. Pinlock say it also means colours appear brighter and it gives more contrast rather than a normal insert. I rode in some pretty stinky weather here in the UK and I found this helmet to give excellent vision. Peripheral vision on adventure helmets is often really good and that's also the case with this helmet. Both breadth and depth are superb, as is clarity from that new visor. And last but not least, it's far easier to change the visor on a TX5 than it was on the TX4. Now you don't have to unscrew the peak to replace the visor. You just release the side pods with two buttons and then leave the peak attached to those side pods. Once you've changed the visor, you just reattach the side pods again. That's much easier than before and there's much less chance of losing little bits and pieces, which we know was an issue with the TX4. Now, if you want to ride with goggles rather than a visor, there are two ways you can do that. Goggles will go in with the visor lifted and I rode like that on dirt with no difficulty at all. You can also remove the visor completely, then refit the side pods with just the peak attached and goggles will fit inside very neatly. Okay, let's go inside. The comfort liner is fully removable and it comes in four parts, two cheek pads, a skull pad, and a removable neck roll. You can swap cheek pads and all the skull pad to get a better fit, or you can modify the standard pad slightly. There are five millimeter layers in each cheek pad and also on either side of the skull pad. And you can peel those out to create a bit of extra room inside the helmet but you need to be sure that extra room is needed because those peel away sections won't go back in if you decide the helmet fitted better with them still in place. The cheek pads have emergency release tabs, so a paramedic can take them out while you're still wearing the lid. And they've also got new Velcro patches to allow you to attach intercom speakers. On other RIs, you tuck the speakers under the fabric in the cheek pad. With these, that Velcro patch puts the speakers in a better position. Once you fit the cheek pad back in place, these patches push into recesses that hold the speakers in place. Our shop staff who installed a lot of intercoms were very pleased to see this new method of fitting the speakers inside this helmet. The TX5 is designed to work with an Arai specific center intercom, but there's nothing to stop an off the shelf intercom going on this helmet. I test fitted a Cardo Pactal Bold intercom to this lid and I had no trouble at all. There's even a pocket that runs through the neck roll that makes it really easy to keep all the excess cables neat and tidy. Now the last couple of bits with the interior, the chin strap is a double D fastener as you get with all our eyes and the covers that stop it rubbing under your chin are removable for washing. There's a pull out chin spoiler as well and I find that makes quite a difference to airflow around the base of the helmet when I pull that out. Okay, let's deal with sizes, approvals and prices. The TX5 comes in sizes from extra small up to extra large and there are three shell sizes to cover that range. Lid sizes extra small and small share the smaller shell, medium and large go in the middle shell and extra large has the biggest shell to itself. Now my head is what's considered to be a round shape, as in the measurement is the same from side to side as it is from front to back, and I wore a medium TX5 without adjusting the inner lining at all. That's my normal size, and I found this helmet very comfortable. 
our eyes are well known for being comfortable if you assume that the internal shape of the lid is compatible with the external shape of your head. I think Arai's use of a soft EPS impact liner helps with that. It's not why they use a soft EPS, it's because they say it's more protective, but it means there's more give if the EPS comes into contact with your head. In terms of approvals, the TX5 meets the new ECE2206 standard for the road, as all new helmets launched from the summer of 2023 onwards have to be. There's no Sharp rating from the UK government as we record this, and there won't be one unless Sharp changes its policy of not testing peaked helmets. As for whether the TX5 will be ACU Gold approved for use on tracks and in competition, I'm waiting to hear back from the importer on that one. I'd expect it to be approved, but we'll add an update to the description below when we hear back on that. Now, pricing, as we record this, it's simple. Plain colours are launching at £599.99 and graphics like this Discovery white design are £699.99. Okay, let's wrap this up. This is the biggest change ever for the Tour Cross series. The first version came out in 2003, the fourth arrived in 2012, so that's nine years for four helmets, and then we've waited 12 years for the fifth. Lots has changed for Arai in that time, and the TX5 reflects that. In my opinion, this helmet is better than the TX4 in virtually every way. The only part from that old helmet that I miss is the brow ventilation, though I can also see why Arai got rid of that because it makes more room for modern goggles. Otherwise, with this helmet, there are improvements everywhere. Vision's better, aero is improved, it's safer, the peak and visor are easier to change, and there's better accommodation for an intercom as well. As a road helmet, it's quite a bit better in my experience than the TX4, and it also works well as an off-road helmet, as I found on the launch in Spain, where there was plenty of dirt riding to be had. The noise is no worse than I'd expect from any peaked helmet, really. If it's your priority to have a quiet helmet, then I would never recommend buying one with a peak. I don't normally talk about comfort with a helmet as it's very subjective, but I think Arai's softer EPS liner does make the helmets more likely to be comfortable unless the internal shape really doesn't suit your head. It's been a long wait for the Tour Cross 5 to emerge, but in my opinion, Arai have made it well worth the wait. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Arai Tour Cross 5, but if there's anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.